The Arctic's Unsolved Mystery The Case of Franklin's Lost Expedition In 1854, as the thrill of geographical discovery was at its zenith, an ambitious expedition set sail from the coast of England. Tasked with mapping the last uncharted corner of the Earth, the Canadian Arctic, this daring journey aimed to unravel the mysteries of the region. Leading the expedition was Sir John Franklin, whose enthusiasm knew no bounds. If he uncovered the elusive Northwest Passage, a direct route from Europe to Asia, his name would be forever immortalized among the ranks of illustrious explorers like Fernando Magellan and Christopher Columbus. Little did he know that this very journey would ultimately lead him to an inglorious end. His ships and crew would disappear without a trace in the icy Arctic, turning their fate into one of the most enduring mysteries for the next 150 years. In the 19th century, the quest for the Northwest Passage gripped the world. This remote sea route through the Arctic promised trade opportunities and economic prosperity. By connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, it would bypass treacherous routes, opening new avenues for commerce between Europe and Asia. Also, mapping the Northwest Passage would also fill gaps in geographical knowledge. Seeking to affirm their recognition and prestige through exploration, the British considered it a matter of national pride. Over the first four decades of the 19th century, the British Admiralty organized a number of expeditions that chartered the Canadian Arctic. By 1845, these efforts had reduced the unexplored area to about 70,000 square miles. It was within this territory that the one final expedition aimed to find the Northwest Passage. The task was entrusted to Sir John Franklin, the renowned British Royal Navy officer and Arctic explorer, whose fame begoned with the publication of a bestseller about his arduous Arctic exploration from 1819 to 1822. At the time of the expedition, he embarked on his final Arctic mission to restore his reputation. Interestingly, Sir John Franklin was only the sixth option for its leader as doubt shrouded his suitability for leading the expedition due to concerns about his age, robust physique, and purported cold intolerance. Despite these reservations, Franklin's veteran status as an Arctic explorer prevailed. In charge of two ships, HMS Terror and HMS Erebus were experienced ice master officers Francis Crozier and James Fitzjames. By February 1845, Erebus and the Terror were prepared for the harsh Arctic ice conditions. They had innovative screw propellers installed, designed to navigate icy waters effectively, and a system for retracting them into the hull to avoid damage. The ships were also fitted with an internal steam heating system for the crew's comfort in frigid conditions. Despite the Admiralty's forecast of a year-long voyage, the ships carried a three-year supply of food, including tinned soup and vegetables, salt-cured meat, pemmican, and live cattle. Provisions also included 200 tin canisters for holding paper records of latitude and longitude to assist in locating the ships during distress. Franklin's comprehensive sailing instructions from the Admiralty encompassed not only the discovery of the Northwest Passage, but also scientific pursuits with a special emphasis on geomagnetic observations. Such a blend of sturdiness, technological advancements, and detailed planning promised a purposeful expedition. On May 19, 1845, the expedition set sail from Greenhith, Kent, embarking on a voyage with a company of 24 officers and 110 men. The journey across the Atlantic was marked by stormy weather and rough seas. Upon reaching the Whalefish Islands in Western Greenland, the crew deposited their final collection of letters to those back home. These correspondences reflected the early stages of the crew's voyage, but offered conflicting insights into their morale. While Sir John Franklin provided optimistic reports, Captain Crozier wrote more sobering letters. After replenishing the stocks of fresh meat and reducing the final crew count to 129 due to illness, the ships journeyed to Baffin Bay, sighted in late July 1845 by the whale hunter boats. Here, 
Franklin waited for favorable weather conditions to cross to Lancaster Sound, the last known whereabouts of the expedition before it vanished from records. By 1847, with no word from the expedition, anxiety began to gnaw at Lady Franklin and several members of the Admiralty. Despite their urging to launch a search party, the Admiralty remained largely calm, drawing comfort from the fact that Franklin had stocked three years' worth of provisions. However, as the silence lengthened and public concern amplified, the Admiralty had to reconsider its stance. Ultimately, they chartered a three-pronged plan in the spring of 1848 that involved an overland rescue party and two sea expeditions. Despite the lack of immediate success, the resolve to find Franklin only intensified. By 1850, 13 ships were scouring the Canadian Arctic, discovering the first tangible relics of Franklin's expedition. In the wake of the expedition's disappearance, people were captivated by the mystery. Stories emerged, some suggesting supernatural forces at play in the icy Arctic. The truth about their fate, even though more realistic, was far more disastrous than any of these fantastic tales. In 1854, nine years after the expedition was launched, another overland expedition discovered alarming evidence of the expedition's fate from the Inuit locals, who recounted tales of starvation and cannibalism of a crew that got trapped at King William Island. Objects in their possession belonging to Franklin's crew confirmed these chilling accounts and Admiralty's worst fears that none of the expedition crew had survived. Eventually, the Admiralty decided to abstain from further searches and declare the crew deceased in service. The mystery of Franklin's expedition's final hours lived on, though. In the spring of 1859, a sled team embarked on a mission to uncover the mysteries of King William Island stumbled upon a document tucked away in a cairn, the so-called Victory Point Note. This message, left by Crozier and Fitz James, held two distinct notes. The initial message penned on May 28, 1847, informed that Erebus and Terror had spent a winter trapped in ice off King William Island's northwest coast. The note, bearing the signature of Sir John Franklin as the commander of the expedition, ended on a hopeful note declaring, all well. However, the paper held a second, grimmer message. Dated April 25th, 1848, it revealed a tale of despair. Erebus and Terra had been icebound for one and a half years, forcing the crew to abandon the ships on April 22nd. By that time, tragedy had struck the crew multiple times, claiming 24 lives, including Franklin himself. Under Crozier's command, the remaining 105 survivors planned to head south to the Back River, a physically taxing journey given the scarce food supplies they could pull on their sleds and the barren heart of the Arctic, offering no game. As resources dwindled, weak men were left behind one by one until there was no one left. Subsequent expeditions confirmed the information from the Victory Point note. A clothed skeleton carrying the papers of Chief Petty Officer was found on King William Island's southern coast, followed by a lifeboat on the island's westernmost point, housing two skeletons, discarded equipment, and a variety of personal items. By 1869, expeditions had found more graves, additional camps, and relics, but no survivors. More than a century later, in the early 1980s, Thanks to the work of University of Alberta anthropology professor Owen Beatty, we learned what really caused the death of Franklin's expedition members. Examining the bones of Franklin's crewmen, he found signs of scurvy and potential cannibalism. He also discovered an unexpectedly high level of lead, 10 times greater than control samples from Inuit skeletons from the same area. This suggested lead poisoning possibly from the lead solder used in the expedition's food tins or other lead-containing items may have exacerbated the effects of scurvy, proving lethal for the crew. Although pneumonia was the ultimate cause of death for the crewmen examined, lead poisoning was considered a significant contributing factor. However, the discovery that everyone longed for occurred in September 2014, when the Victoria Strait expedition discovered a long-buried treasure in the heart of the Arctic. The wreck 
of the HMS Erebus, Franklin's lost ship. The ship lay silent and still in shallow waters, west of O'Reilly Island. Barely two years thence, the Arctic Research Foundation brought further news. The discovery of HMS Terror. Resting unanchored at the bottom of the sea south of King William Island, the Terror was found in an astonishing state of preservation. Franklin's expedition never discovered the Northwest Passage. The first one to achieve this momentous task was Robert McClure, five years after Franklin embarked on his journey. Paradoxically, McClure set out on an expedition that, among other goals, aimed to investigate the fate of Franklin's voyage. This was the Prince of Wales Strait, far north of Franklin's route. In the harsh irony of fate, McClure succeeded in unveiling the very passage that Franklin had sought, but paid dearly for with his life and the lives of his crew, etching a tragic chapter in the annals of Arctic exploration.